Hi, I'm Robert with the Mount Baldy Ski Patrol. This skills video relates to putting a patient on a backboard, which is normally a two-person operation, and I'm going to do it with just one person because we don't have enough people here. Um, so, why it's always a two-person operation is any time that you're doing an immobilization of the spine, you need to have somebody who's um, keeping the head immobile and uh, you would do this in this manner here and they stay on the head until the person is successfully put down. So to help us remember that I brought some props today and we'll put these here so that her head is immobilized and then I'll talk a little bit about the backboard. The backboard is the ultimate splinting device. Johanna, can you show up at me, please? I am. Um, so we use it in a number of situations. The protocol is if there's a head injury, if they've lost consciousness, we put them on a, on a backboard. If there's a back injury or suspected back injury, we put them on a backboard. If there's um, multiple fractures or large bone fractures such that the mechanism of injury is severe, we put them on a backboard. If there's internal injuries, we put them on a backboard. So basically, anytime there is a severe injury, the patient is going to go on a backboard. Now, it's a splinting device. What do we always do before we splint? We always have to check CMS. So when you first start and put the patient on the backboard before you've done anything, you need to check their CMS. So is the patient unconscious here? No, I'm Can unconscious. you wiggle the toes for me? Feel any tingling? No. Okay, what toe am I touching? I'm touching all of them actually. Which one is the most pressure? The pinky. Okay. How about the other foot? That's my big toe. Okay, can you wiggle them for me? Okay, any tingling? No. Okay, so I've checked CMS. Now, we need to strap her down to the backboard. There's some important things to remember when you strap a patient down to the backboard. First off, you don't want her head strapped down the guineas are having their say here you don't want her head strapped down until the rest of her body is strapped down because if her head is strapped down first and we have to roll her over she will end up twisting her neck Okay, so what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to lay the straps out where I want them because that way everybody can help. So where I'm laying them out, the important thing is I want some that go over her shoulders. This might be a V or in this case it's this. I want one across her um, chest. I want one, feeling her hip bones, I want one pretty much over her hip bones and one right in here on her thighs, one down further on the legs and one. Now if there's an injury, um, I don't want any of them to be directly on the injury. Um, down in here, I'm trying to make sure I'm not right on her knees, you don't want to do that. Sometimes you might have to put a little support underneath the knee so you're not pulling it down. So the first ones that go on is up here at the top on the chest. Johanna, why don't you show the guineas over there while I'm strapping down. Okay. Hi, I'm back. Now we're going to go ahead and secure the strap. So, there's, an, there's some rules about securing the straps. You always do the chest first and then work your way down. So when I do the chest here, normally I'd have a person on each side here, to do I'll it. Here, I'll give you a hand. Can you take a big breath out, please? Take it out and hold I it, got please. This. Hold that. Ready? Mm hmm. Let's move this one down a little bit. It's far 
down as we can get it. Okay, on three? Yep. Okay, go. Okay. Not really on three, but well. This one here is at a crazy angle because we didn't have a slot here. Notice we have padding under her knees there. And theoretically we would tie our feet together too. Okay, so before I do the head, the other thing that we do is we secure the patient's arms. And one simple way of doing this is with a clove hitch. over both of them and then she's in um, there are other methods but that's the simple way okay so now she's tied in we can do work on her head to support her head there is head beds that you either use commercial ones or ones that are available from uh, that you make out you can do a blanket and roll it into a head bed so the person here would lift lift her head just slightly to get this underneath. This would be stuck down. I'm not going to stick it down right now. Remember, the person holding the head is still supporting the head. Yes. You don't let go at any time. Then there's blocks that come in on either side directly above the ears. Okay. Now here's the trick. I'm going to take my gloves off to do this. The patient is in, but their head isn't supported yet, and you need to have their head supported. Protocol is very clear about what we do in this situation. We tape their head down. Now, I'm not going to pull the tape over because I don't want to pull her head off, or pull her head sideways as I'm doing this, but you take the tape and you go straight across and tape it down. Okay? Notice there is nothing underneath the tape between her forehead and the tape. And there's supposed to be an X shape. I went straight across because I didn't have the piece that went through here. Yeah, I'm probably in trouble taping her. So now I'm going to put an X across. Short on that one. That's easily done. So our OEC protocol is very clear on this. You always do this. Um, the EMTs have a slightly different protocol if the person is over... 80 years old and has extremely thin skin so that they're worried about pulling the skin off when you remove the tape they don't put the tape directly on the forehead and they'll put something else in between okay. we don't put anything across the chin um, that is not in the protocol now so now she's completely secured down I've splitted her what do I have to do look at me please I have to check your CMS. Excuse me, miss. Can you move your, your feet? Move your toes here. Any tingling? No. Okay. I could go in and check a, a pulse. In this situation, I'm not going to. Did you move your toes there? Any tingling? Which toe am I touching over here? The pinky. Okay. I need to barf. Now. If she you, needs, can you do if a, she needs to barf, do you need what another we patroller? need to do is we need to roll her up on her side. Barf, 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 barf. And then roll her down. And if she's done properly, she should stay in position and she shouldn't do anything bad. Anything else that I missed? Uh, not that I can Okay, think Johanna, let's go. See you later. Have fun. Okay. So our OEC protocol is very clear on this. You always do this. Um, the EMTs have a slightly different protocol. If the person is over 80 years old and has extremely thin skin, so we're worried about pulling skin off. They don't put the tape directly on the forehead. Don't put anything across the skin. Um, that is not in the protocol. So now it's just completely secure back.